Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's had a great day so far. Uh, my name is James. I'm here to talk to you today about what we're doing from a security analytics perspective uh, with, for generative AI. Uh, for those of you who don't know, hopefully you do, but if you don't, as Elastic, not only do we build the best search products and the best vector store there is, we also build the best security analytics platform on the market. And the way we're able to do that is by leveraging all the goodness that Elasticsearch offers us. So just really quickly, what we do in the security space is we allow users of Elastic to bring in any sort of data you can think of. Uh, we have native agents to do that. Chuck it into the Elastic stack, and we make it actionable by running all the search goodness on top of that, trying to spot threats and detect uh, anomalous behavior within their environments. Uh, similarly, not only do we do that, but we also have native prevention mechanisms, so we are able to actively stop threats from happening in the first place. But the only reason we're able to do all of this is because of all of the goodness that Elasticsearch has to offer uh, from a product perspective and from a search perspective. Now, of course, we've been thinking, like, what can we do within this entire security workflow to start adding generative AI? Uh, generative AI has proven to be extremely popular in the security analytics space for various different reasons, which I'll be talking about. But primarily, here's a couple of things that we want to do and focus on. So as Ken was mentioning in his talk, we've built a security AI assistant powered by large language models today. And what this allows our users to do is, with that data that they're bringing in from pretty much any source you can think of, uh, we allow them to feed that data into the assistant. Uh, inc including alerts which would have triggered. So we include natively out-of-the-box detection rules, which are essentially searches that run on the data to spot malicious behavior. When the result of that search happens and we spot malicious behavior, we're able to feed that into the assistant for uh, being able to deal with those outcomes. Um, not only logs and not only alerts, but also just generic incident response data, so part of the day-to-day -day of a security analytics persona or someone working in security operations is to go through incidents and record what they're doing. And we're able to help them feed in that data to the assistant to drive uh, outcomes and lower what's known as the mean time to respond, one of the most key metrics in any cybersecurity operations center. And lastly, one of the other things we really wanted to focus on was within security and the, the search world, right? Um, since it is all powered by search, Sometimes these searches can get very complex. We're doing a lot of correlation activity. We're doing a lot of aggregations. And not everyone might be too familiar or too comfortable with the concept of building those searches. So we did want to see if we could use generative AI to power natural language input to start to build these searches. So these are all things we've been doing. That's the, those are the core focuses of the assistant. Uh, and you can see the, the three main outcomes really are to lower that mean time to respond, generate those queries, and also just gain an industry understanding about these attacks that we would have detected. Now, of course, within security, uh, there's obviously a lot of privacy concerns, a lot of skepticism as well. As security individuals, we are very skeptical about these technologies. So within the assistant itself, we also built in a tremendous number of workflows to make sure that our users are comfortable using this assistant. So we built in things like anonymization. So any data, any contextual data that you want to feed the assistant to generate outcomes, you can simply select the data you want to send, but also anonymize it. So any third-party large language model that you might want to send this data to wouldn't see the original values. We've built in things like role-based access control. So the same mechanism Shai was talking about, about making sure people searching for the right data only get the results they're allowed to see. We've built in all of that. Uh, we also made this really easy for customers and users to track the usage of large language models. These things can get fairly expensive if you start to use them very often. So we built in a really nice way to be able to track all of that. And uh, the approach we wanted to take as well, we didn't want to lock users into using one model in particular, or what, like, the, what, what, like one large language model. We allow users to select multiple different models should they wish. This is for cost control, accuracy, whatever it may be. So we've built in a really easy way to switch between these large language models. Now, I could talk about this all day, but I'd rather show it to you. So I'm going to pivot over to a demo now. And um, you'll get to see this in action. So if we can just bring up the demo, please. There we go. So hopefully you can all see this. So here where, the, where I am, I'm in the alerts view of Elastic Security. So this is Kibana, the same Kibana you might be used to for any of our other use cases. Uh, we just happen to be in the security view. And this is sort of the main page our users use when triaging these alerts. So this page is basically showing everyone, these are the potential malicious activities we spotted in your environment. And again, these are basically the results of searches running. 
Now, typically, a security analyst in their day-to-day, -day, one of the biggest challenges is having to deal with all these alerts, seeing if any of them are related, knowing even how to deal with them, because this is not an easy industry to be in. So how can the assistant start to help here? So let's grab one of these alerts. I have an alert here for a suspicious Microsoft Office chat process. So we give users quite a bit of information to start with. So we grab all the relevant documents and data. We make it into a very easy to understand sort of synopsis of what happened. But in reality, there's at a point in time, as you're investigating, there's gonna, you're going to come across a situation where you might not know how to deal with this. You might not know what this attack vector is. So this is really where the assistant comes in. So if I hit on this chat button here, a couple of things are going to happen. So we, we launched the assistant, and you can see right now I have a particular model selected. But like I said, you can switch between um, different large language models on demand. And what we've done is we've loaded up the contextual data from the alert. So again, in the beginning in Shai's presentation, you heard them talk about how important it is uh, to provide as much context as possible. So we do that, and you can see here uh, the context is being provided from the alert itself. But we've given users full control over what's being sent. So at any point in time, as you're going through this uh, alert document, you can say, listen, I I'm not comfortable sending this particular field, so I'll just turn it off. Or maybe I might want to send it, but I want to anonymize it. So you can just hit this toggle, and it will all do the hard work of anonymizing that for you. We also crafted pre-built prompts. So as a user of the assistant, we don't want you to have to be a prompt engineer or a prompt expert. So we've done the hard work of testing what prompts work best for the context that we are in. So these prompts will actually change depending on how and where you're using the assistant from. And this specific prompt is essentially asking me, asking the assistant, hey, break this down for me. Tell me what I should be doing for this particular incident, uh, what features of elastic security I can use to get to the root cause, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to hit Enter here. And whilst we're waiting for that response, I'll walk you through some of the other features that we've built into the assistant. So all the settings for the assistant are centralized, so you can customize this to your heart's content. You can add as many connectors as you want. Today, uh, we work with uh, OpenAI and Azure's OpenAI service specifically, but no limitation on what model's there. Uh, we do find the GPT-4 family of models to be the best and most accurate for this use case, but users can switch and select this as much as they want. We have also have this concept of quick prompts here. So if you have prompts within your organization that you want to repeatedly be able to ask, uh, you can just select them and just add them in to the workflow uh, at your heart's content. And you can just add as many as you need. So that's really, really powerful. Just wanted to make sure we built in repeatable steps for our analysts to follow. I'll zoom out a bit here. And you can see we got the result back. So this is 100% generated by a large language model. You can see it's nicely formatted in Markdown as well. Uh, and what this has done is it's grabbed that alert and just described it to me, saying, listen, here we detected this suspicious chat process. And it's also inferred why I'm asking this. So it's also elaborated a bit more. So it said this could be indicative of an exploitation of attempt involving Office applications or malicious macros. Really, really nice. It gave me some recommended actions. It gave me some recommended triaging steps. And notice as well, it has context that I'm working within Elastic Security. I'm not working within a different platform. So it gave me steps to follow within Elastic Security. And these are all native Elastic Security features, and it linked me specifically to the documentation. Uh, as an example, one of the features that we provide our users is the ability to run something like OS Query, which turns any machine into a queryable relational database. Uh, and we've actually suggested some queries that they can run. So really, really powerful stuff. But we don't just stop there, right? So the power of this is you have a fully fledged workflow where you can ask the assistant to elaborate. So I might want to ask, you know, it mentioned, hey, this was the result of a malicious macro running. I might not know what the heck that is, right? So I can say, hey, in this context, what is a malicious macro? Right, so this, if you can think about it, put yourself in the position of someone investigating uh, an incident that could be costing your organization a lot of money. And instead of spending hours trying to sift and trawl through all the documents you have, trying to find out what a macro is by Googling and whatever this may be, we got this result back in seconds. You could be the best analyst in the world, but you're still going to save a tremendous amount of time just by asking a question instead of having to trawl through all the rich knowledge that there is about this stuff uh, online. 
So it's broken down here. It told me what a macro is. It told me why these are typically used in these types of attacks. So this is really, really helpful, really, really useful. And it saved me a tremendous amount of time instead of doing that. Uh, it also pointed out, for example, that this particular alert involves this pr process, certutil.exe. Um, as I'm going through the rest of my alerts, I actually noticed that there is a specific alert called out for a sus suspicious search util command. So one of the things that an analyst has to do in their day-to-day -day is figure out if any of these alerts are related in any way, shape, or form. That's a very manual, tedious process. So why don't we use the assistant to help with that? So if we load up our chat again, I'll add in the second alert I was working on, and I'm just going to simply ask it, is this second alert related? So if you can imagine, like this is, again, lowering that MTTR. This is what the main priority for us is, and it's probably the, the, the challenge that the industry is still really focused on trying to solve. And instead of me, again, as an analyst, having to go through all these alerts, looking at all the documents, all the different fields within them, trying to correlate if any of them are matched, it's doing this for me, which is a really, really powerful thing to have within your arsenal. And it said, look, yes, this second alert is related, but again, remember, security people are skeptical. You can't just tell them something is related or not. You have to tell them why. So it told me why it's related. So it said, listen, both these alerts involve this particular user, this particular host. Um, here's where they tie in into something we call the MITRE attack matrix, which is basically a really nice list of tactics and techniques that attackers try to use. And it gave me everything within context. This is great. Let's take it a step further. Because now, uh, typically, as part of my security operations workflow, I have to start to bubble this up to the team, right? Or to my CISO or whoever that may be. Writing those reports takes time. Let's use the AI assistant to do that. So I'm going to say, uh, please generate a summary of what happened here. Also include a diagram of the events. So again, even if you're the smartest analyst in the world and you know all of this, you know everything the assistant told you, but I don't want to spend an hour building a report and drawing a diagram. Let's have the assistant do it for you. Just in the interest of time, because I see that timer there and it's my worst enemy, um, I'm going to pivot to some other examples while we're, whilst we're waiting for this response. So we haven't really spoken about where all the richness of vector searching and RAG comes in just yet within the assistant. So I'll give you a sneak peek into what we're doing there. So some of you may know, but we are working on adding uh, a brand new query language into Elastic, something called the Elasticsearch Piped Query Language, ESPipeQL for short. There is no large language model which has any idea what ESQL is, because none of that data was available whilst we were developing the language. So that's one of these examples of being able to use retrieval augmented generation to supplement that knowledge. And what we've done is we've built in just that for users to be able to ask a question like, listen, I have this use case and I'd love for you to be able to generate an ESQL query for me uh, based on natural language. So we did that. We had our own dog food, and we built in RAG into the assistant, of course, as well. And this is one example of that. And I asked it to generate an ESQL query for me, even though there's no large language model today in the world that knows what ESQL is. And this is the result. So it gave me that query, and it described it for me, step by step, what that query is doing. And it gave me example output. How good is this, right? So again. Um, rag to the rescue here. Of course, we're going to be doing all of that within the assistant. It's just one way to start. Uh, but just to give you an example of what we're doing there. So let's go back to what we were doing. You see, we got our executive summary here. It's told me exactly what this user did, or, or I should say, the, what happened in this attack. It drew a nice diagram for me. Um, so now, this part of my work is done. We've also built in workflows within the assistant to complement the other features we have in Elastic Security, like being able to add this to our case. So we have the concept of being able to create an incident or a case. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I have an existing case here, and I'm just going to add that. Uh, because the assistant gave me the result in Markdown, it's native to our cases solution. So you can see I didn't have to do anything to make it look nice and neat within cases. All of this generated by the assistant. Really, really good stuff there. The last thing I'll show is just again, that concept of even today on our existing query languages, uh, we're able to ask a question to generate an Elastic-based query, like this one here. So we have our event query language. And for those of you who don't know, Elastic takes a very open and transparent approach to security. So we have hundreds of detection rules in the open, which these large language models were trained on, as including all our code, all our repositories. 
So even from day one, even without the RAG use case, it knew a tremendous amount about Elastic. So we're able, even today, give it a natural language question or a natural language use case, like give me a query for data exfiltration from Linux systems, and it's able to give me a fully functioning EQL query back and explain it for me. So hopefully you get an idea of what we're doing there from the AI assistant side, particularly for security. Um, we're also doing very similar things in observability, so I'm going to hand it off to that team for that. But thank you all very much for listening. I'll be there at the AMA if anyone has any questions.